We're producing 200,000 ounces a year in the first six years of that study, gold equivalent. But as silver, that number is 15 million. You know, at 1275 and 17 silver, that gave us an IRR of 42%. There seems to be some sort of disconnect. Are you showing the numbers off? Are you showing the project off? properly to its fullest potential. I would have thought people should be listening to this, but what's the problem? What do you think the problem is? Hello and welcome to Crooks Investor. First of all, thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, helps us understand which companies you think we should be spending our time, money and effort on. And also do leave your comments below. That also helps us to understand the sorts of questions you'd like us to be asking, how you think we're doing, and of course, what you think of the company. And if you want to catch this as a podcast or read about it as an article or transcript, you can go to cruxinvestor.com. And for our Crux Club members, you get early access to this video. And if you haven't already done so, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, for more videos like this, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Morgan Polykin, who's the CEO of Almaden Minerals, their TSXV listed miner with a gold silver story in Mexico. Uh, recent feasibility study uh, shows some excellent numbers, low ASIC, good returns, long life of mine, uh, but market's slightly confused. It's been around for, since 2010, maybe slightly tired of the story. Um, we've seen instances with companies of a, with similar numbers on their feasibility studies at two, three, four times the market cap. So something going wrong there. A couple of points, people are a little bit confused about recovery rates for gold and silver projects in this, in this type of structure. Um, the, is it a high grade or low grade project with their open pit solution? And finally, having been named in a lawsuit by an NGO against the Mexican government concerning the mining law, it hasn't really helped either. So lots of things to unbundle in there. Quite a, an intelligent uh, CEO. He does uh, have a process that they've been through of de-risking. However, not so good at telling the story, it seems. So take a look in the description below at some of the other topics we discuss. Anything interesting in particular, click on the number. That's a timestamp and I'll jump you to that part of the video. Otherwise, enjoy what Morgan has to say. Morgan, how are you doing, sir? Excellent, thank you very much. Well, thanks for and joining you. us. Uh, but yeah, all good, all good here. You're joining us from your cabin up in the hills north of Whistler. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's it's very nice here. We're up at four, four to five thousand feet, and I've still got snow around me on the peaks, and uh, uh, it's a good place to be in these times. It certainly is. It sounds gorgeous. I know, I know Whistler, but I don't. I, I, and I can sort of imagine where you are. Fantastic. Well, look, uh, Morgan, new story to us. Why don't you kick off, give us that one minute overview and we'll pick it up from there. Sure, great. Well, uh, Almaden Minerals has been around a long time. Um, it, we went public in 1986 and we're focused on a new gold and silver deposit we discovered from scratch in 2010. So this is a decade into the development of that project. Uh, and um, I, I'm glad, very glad to be able to talk about it. Uh, we've taken it through to a feasibility and we're in the permitting stage, which is really the final stage of development. Fantastic, thank you. 2010, 10 years, what's been happening? <laughs> well, it's, it's been a very uh, challenging market to find a deposit. Uh, timing is everything, I suppose. You can't time when you're gonna make a discovery. Uh, uh, August, 2010, we announced the uh, discovery hole and since that time we've taken it through preliminary resource uh, if I'm not mistaken two PEAs uh, a pre-feasibility study and then finally in uh, December of 2018 so a little over you know a year and a half ago we announced a feasibility study and uh, then it, last year submitted our full permits for mining so uh, it feels like um, like it's been a marathon through uh, through a very challenging precious metals environment that last uh, decade. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of excitement at the towards the end of 2016 and in, in the beginning of 2017, and then a kind of slow decline, you know, to, to, to where you are today. Um, I mean, just to, I'm just trying to understand the management's approach to delivering shareholder value. Okay, so. You know, what was happening in 2016, 17 that, you know, saw, you know, peaks of, you know, up to, you know, 180 kind of level uh, compared to, you know, today where you're at at sort of 50 cent. I'm talking about U.S. here. Yeah, I think uh, we were able, obviously, uh, precious metals prices, I mean, uh, uh, are 
feasibility study used 1275 and 17 silver as our base case and we've been you know well above that uh throughout the last uh, 10 years at various different uh, deliverables. So the pre-feasibility study, I mean, that's a pretty advanced study. It's not as advanced as what we have now, a feasibility study, but uh, you know, that came at a particularly good time. Uh, uh, right in about that time, we did a, we did a bot deal. Uh, and so there was a lot of interest in the company and uh, the bot deal, the, the focus of that was to, was to, um, Get us, give us the funds to do the feasibility study. So, I guess the way I would characterize the the, the share price over the over this period of time I'm describing is, you know, we've had uh, various milestones that, uh, um, and and a really fluctuating precious metal environment. Um, uh, you know, there 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 have been significant challenges for operating companies and a, and a, a dearth of interest. Uh, Throughout that ten years, uh, in 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 precious metal space, so um, I really hope that our timing here, uh, uh, doing all this heavy lifting for ten years, is is very good now with the environment that we find ourselves in. Right. And so, how much money have you raised? Um, let's say since two thousand and ten. I know it's been around since nineteen eighty six, but how much have you raised? Well, I'll, uh, we've spent about forty million dollars uh, to go from initial discovery to this stage uh the feasibility uh permitting stage of the project uh so obviously there's uh, uh a lot of exploration drilling um and, and i might say that we do a lot of things a little differently um i'm uh, i'm the prospector that uh uh put together this this project idea and we did the initial drilling ourselves uh it's now in a separate company uh, that was spun out of uh, Almaden, but we uh, own our own diamond drills, and so we were able to um, do do things a lot cheaper. But nevertheless, we've spent about forty million to get uh, uh, obviously feasibility studies. There's lots of outside independent contractors and consultants involved in that uh, uh, in all those stages. So, uh, so that's kind of the capital that's gone into this project. Okay, so are we in uh, U.S. or Canadian there? Uh, that that would be Canadian. Yeah. Canadian. Okay, so forty million bucks has been spent on drilling cheaply, uh, consultants, etc. Um, market cap in I'm not quite sure what it's like. It's it's, it's about fifty eight million US uh, today. Um, market's not giving you much credit for the asset, are they? No, I think that's very true. Uh, you know, it's it's been a very challenging uh, environment for people. Look, people are, are risk averse, uh, despite uh, the precious metal uh, prices. In my personal view, when you look glo globally at the M&A environment, um, until very recently, it's been focused on producing assets that are entirely de-risked. Uh, so there hasn't been a lot of M&A or, um, or I guess love, you might say, for for people who are, have projects at the stage we're at. Uh, there's obviously a lot of uncertainty uh, in the permitting stage and in these uh, advanced studies. Um, and until you have your project fully de-risked, uh, um, you know, people are uh, have certainly over the last few years, particularly being reticent. Uh, and that's fine because obviously uh, there's great value in going through these steps and uh, de-risking the project, which is what we've been focused on. I do want to get into that a bit. So but can you just talk us through some of the FS numbers? Um, you know, what are they telling you? Yeah, so I think what makes Extaka very, very unique uh, right off the, the top is that it, the half the value, it's a precious metals deposit, half gold, half silver dollars per ton. And uh, that's, that's uh, we've got a, a two and a half million ounce reserve in uh, gold equivalent terms. Uh, and, uh, you know this this project is producing 200,000 according to the feasibility study at 1275 and 17 silver we're producing 200,000 ounces a year in the first 6 years of that study uh gold equivalent but as silver uh there's that that number is 15 million uh so this is a a very special project and you can look at it either way from a gold uh point of view or a silver point of view um you know, at 12.75 and 17 silver, uh, this 2018 end of 2018 feasibility study, it, it that gave us an IRR of 42%, uh, payback under under 
uh, two years, we have been focused, uh, that, and that's sort of half the story, obviously, uh, feasibility study on, on the current reserve is, is very important and giving us these kinds of numbers. But we've been very focused over the 10 years I've described, which has been very hard from a capital point of view, uh, on de-risking the, the resource that we had identified and taking it through to this, this uh, stage, a feasibility stage. But, uh, you know, this is a brand new discovery as of 2010. It's, uh, it's not a historic district. And we, we think there's significant exploration upside that remains. And, uh, but we haven't really been focused on that. Um, we've been really focused on, on de-risking the resource. So I think there's, there's uh, exploration upside here. And, um, you know, we can get into that uh, detail if you like, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a two-headed beast here. The, the feasibility study, uh, I really like to highlight the silver side of it. Uh, I think it's quite, quite special to have, uh, have it both uh, uh, so significant in gold and silver terms. Well, yeah, I mean, both both are very topical at the moment for sure. But there seems to be some sort of disconnect. You you've got a two hundred thousand ounce gold equivalent number for the first six years of the life of mine. Um, do you think people are just like bored of the story? I mean, maybe it's been around too long, and they're not you're not getting a fair hearing um, here because you know the, the numbers you're talking about. You're basing it, as you say, on a you know twelve seventy five gold uh, number. Um, gold's at eighteen hundred bucks today. Um, are you showing the numbers off? Are you showing the project off properly to its fullest potential? I think that's a very fair question. Uh, you know, um, marketing, I'm a technical uh, uh, CEO and, uh, and obviously I'm, I'm intimately involved in the, all the technical details of the project and the project uh, management and leadership. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think uh, that's, a, that's a fair question to ask. Uh, uh, you know, it, it has been, um, it, there's no question about it, it has been a grind the last 10 years to go through these various studies and, uh, and to risk the project. Uh, uh, I can tell you, there, I, I'm going to say it was uh, 2013, somewhere in there, there was a Canadian bank that, uh, that had our project on a list of gold projects and, and didn't have uh, half the value of the project listed in their in their, in their resource tables, and uh, uh, because it was comprised of silver, um, so you know, it's it's been a struggle to communicate this project uh, through those past ten years. And and I think you're I think you're touching something. I think the project, uh, uh, while I can point to it being a new discovery in 2010. Um, first drilling ever, and, and we staked the project. At the same time, uh, I think it, it, it is a bit of an old story um, that has, it, it tends to not be in the limelight for certain. Yeah, I mean, because it seems bizarre to me. You've got life of mine, 11 years, reasonable. Anything double digit is good. Um, 200 plus ounces gold equivalent is good. The IRR is good. The ASIC is good. I mean, I would have thought people should be listening to this, but do you think there's too many Mexican silver stories out there? People are uh, attracted to bigger, more, better promoted stories. What, I mean, what's the problem? What do you think the problem is? I, 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 I think we had a really good run with the discovery. Um, and, you know, we had a $5 share price if or, or around there in... Uh, I guess it was April 2011, and uh, we uh, obviously by the end of 2011, the market was falling away, and and we've kind of we carried on. We were able to. Uh, I think it was 2013. Gold dropped 150 dollars in one day, and we had a very significant uh, current uh, shareholder who stepped up and and gave us the uh, in a private placement the money to do the infill drilling. So this has been going on a long time. I mean, a decade. I, I can hardly believe it myself uh, that I've been uh, developing this project for a decade, and and that's kind of what it takes. Uh, so a lot of the stories that you see that are quite successful um, have you know an iteration behind them, and often um, you know this hard heavy lifting has long been done, and and they're rejuvenating a project, and so. You know, we've been continually de-risking it over that period of time. No question, there are some very good uh, silver projects in Mexico uh, um, and elsewhere that are uh, certainly uh, quite rightly getting a lot of attention. Um, I think 
our, our view has been as we de-risk the project and move it forward, um, you know, it will get that it will get that attention. We're in the very challenging period of time uh, of permitting in general, and and then you factor into that some of the particular things going on in our jurisdiction and and, and with our permitting process, and then finally, uh, uh, you know, the the bizarre new world we find ourselves in. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty around that permitting uh, process, and, and and again, I know in the industry itself, M and A has been focused on either cash flowing projects or, or completely direct projects. Uh, um, so these development stage stories, uh, you know, I think that they can be get lost, they can get lost in the shuffle a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we, we are very hopeful we're, we're close to, to, to that finish line where we can demonstrate a, you know, a fully de-risked project with permits in hand, but we're, we're not there yet. And, uh, and there, we've got to get those permits first. How much cash have you got today? Yeah, we just raised uh, a two million Canadian uh, in the darkest week of coronavirus in March. Uh, so uh, our exact figures somewhere in the range realms of uh, three million Canadian, which allows us, uh, you know, to kind of wait out uh, this permitting stage we're in, uh, and that was the purpose of that private placement. Okay, you alluded to the vagaries of the the district that you're in and and the permitting process. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more? Is that something anything we need to be worried about? Well, I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now surrounding Mexico in general terms. Uh, you know, I think that that's our our biggest risk right now. Obviously, we've got a feasibility study under our belt, so it's it's jurisdictional and and um you know timing on our permits uh uh there are all you know the panorama of mexico um there are particular things going on with our project as there is with every project but there are many many uh permits that are are currently uh delayed and in, in, in a variety of sectors uh it's not just mining so uh things have uh, dramatically slowed down with a new administration that came in uh a little over a year ago, and uh, and that is is certainly a source for concern. There's some very bright spots too. Uh, Mexico is a, a mining jurisdiction with a very strong mining pedigree, which is why we're there. Uh, uh, there's local the local mining industry, the Mexican mining industry, is um, you know is the is a significant lobby uh, group. Uh, it's not just comprised of foreign companies investing there. Um, some of the biggest mining companies in the world are Mexican, uh, Grupo Mexico and Fresnillo. Uh, so, uh, you know, we think things will, will, uh, uh, it will remain a very important mining country that, uh, and, and live up to its pedigree of being a good place to, to develop a mine. But in the short term, uh, there's been a, a lot of delays, uh, uh, across the board in Mexico. The civil service has been, uh, before coronavirus, the civil service was kind of decimated, and uh, and um, you know there's been a lot of uh, for investors some some you know perhaps reasons to to pause uh, 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 and and wait and see what what will happen with Mexico. We've seen um, uh, uh, Silvercrest get its permits. Uh, they're more uh, regional in nature from from uh, federal. Um, uh, permitting, uh, which is very, uh, I think, good for them. Uh, and so that's a real bright star. And, and I think there'll be other ones, uh, you know, but uh, the last year has been challenging uh, for, uh, you know, the investing in Mexico. Uh, and, and I think, um, you know, I'm very positive and I'm happy to talk about that, but I think that's a bit of a background. No, that, 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 look, thank you for being honest um, about the situation. Um, we speak to a lot of companies uh, in Mexico. Uh, we don't get that level of candor, so I appreciate that. Um, you talk about this being a grind. It's been a long time um, getting to this point, but you know, equally you've got shareholders sitting on, you know, they may, may be underwater here, who are also finding it a bit of a grind. So what are the bright spots that you alluded to just a second ago? What should they be looking forward to? Because as I say, the feasibility study suggests this is not a bad project, but no one's listening. And, and to that point, when we put a message out asking people if they wanted to ask questions of the company, we didn't get a response. That's the first time that's ever happened. So um, this is a chance. So what, what should they be looking forward to? We, we have submitted our full permits for mining. Um, we've had some challenges in, in that uh, the environmental agency 
uh, has delayed, uh, 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 the word was suspended the review of the of the permit process. And now we're into this uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, which has delayed things further. Uh, but we have an excellent team in Mexico. We know what we're doing in Mexico. We've been there for for uh, for a long time, and so we uh, um, we we have, are working on on resolving that. Uh, we think that this project uh, has no fundamental fatal flaws, and it is an excellent project from a social environmental. Um, Point of view from uh, obviously we talked about the economics and there you know my belief is this will be a highly beneficial project for the local communities who have demonstrably uh, supported this project uh, it will uh, I mean uh, I, I know people like good news stories from a variety of perspectives um, we have uh, we're going to be building a, a what will ultimately be at closure a community water uh, dam, which will enhance access to clean water for the local communities. We asked our engineers to build it in a permanent fashion. Uh, we've had over 800 people sign a petition in favor of this project. Uh, um, we have uh, done the uh, one of the first, uh, it's in Mexico, the acronym is EVIS and EBIS, which is a social impact assessment, which involved uh, uh, a very extensive demography uh, and uh, um, detail uh, study of people's actual views of the of the company and the project locally and their hopes, dreams, wishes, and concerns. We listen to those and we've addressed them through things like the the water uh, facility. We have no tailings dam. Uh, we are <clears throat> um, uh, uh, a dry stack filtered tailings facility. Our waste rock is limestone, which is people uh, I'm sure know is highly neutralizing. There's very low potential for acid rock drainage. In fact, our feasibility study, we uh, as one of the opportunities, we identified uh, the the possibility of selling our limestone waste. Uh, it, it, a preliminary study showed that it could be very good um, feed for cement stock. Uh, and there's some of the largest cement uh, open pit mines and uh, facilities in Puebla state near us. We're in an industrial state with a paved road. Um, you know, we're in a uh, good access, uh, uh, knock on wood always, but we have very low security uh, risk in this area. This is not an area where we're uh, 20 minutes or 20 kilometers from an industrial park. Uh, where Kimberly Clark has uh, got a big facility, uh, Volkswagen plant is an hour and a half drive away. So uh, this ticks a lot of boxes. Uh, environmentally, um, uh, obviously, uh, uh, this is an area that, uh, you know, there's no parks or uh, we've got our, agri our archaeological clearances. We've worked very hard to de-risk this project and, and establish very strong local community relationships. Uh, we just signed an MOU, which we announced in February of this year, uh, with a local water user group, and we're, we have invested in a, uh, a smaller community water facility, not the one in the feasibility study already. Um, and uh, you know, I think we're our view is we're embedded in the community, and we've got a great team right from our, the social anthropologist. Uh, uh, the, the, the lady who runs our, our community relations program on the ground, uh, right through up to our legal advisors. Uh, uh, there have been challenges with the permitting, um, you know, uh, supported by an outside group. Uh, there, there was uh, a lawsuit against the government of Mexico concerning the, the mining law uh, is something our claims uh, were utilized for. And, and there's a bunch of those, uh, we're not the only lawsuit like that in Mexico, so it's a very confusing sort of brain freeze uh, thing to describe, but uh, it has held up our permitting process, uh, this challenge against the uh, the mining law. And, uh, you know, that that that, that is, uh, those are the kinds of things I think, uh, my personal view is as CEO of a, of a mining company, that, that happen when you're permitting a, a gold project uh, an open pit mine somewhere in the world. Uh, you know, these, the, the exact flavor of it is different, but uh, we know that outside uh, NGOs uh, will will get engaged uh, in these sort of things. So so that's the thing that's pinned uh, to, to to this project is is a lawsuit uh, against the government of Mexico, naming the, 
the Congress and the president claiming that the mining law is unconstitutional. So that's working through the system. In the meantime, uh, you know, the environmental agency held up our permit um, based on that lawsuit. And our advisors told us that, uh, as uh, have advised us, that that's not a basis for them to hold it up. So we were uh, taking steps to resolve that and, and then coronavirus hit. So uh, you mentioned this being a kind of an old story. Uh, it's been around a long time. Um, there hasn't, I, my belief is that the only kind of M&A we've seen over the last decade since this discovery that I've been working on this project is kind of de-risked um, cash flowing projects. And our goal is to get there for our shareholders and create that value. And along the way, I'm, I'm a technical person. I'm very conservative and uh, um, you, you know, our chairman is that way. And that's, that's the way this company is built. So, you know, we are, we are not uh, excessively promotional. We feel like uh, the, the steps to do are to, to do, to, to risk the project and then talk about it. And uh, this project is, you know, for all the pluses and boxes that, you know, I'm sure there's some of I've overlooked uh, uh, with this project, uh, um, for all the pluses and boxes we can tick, uh, you know, it, ha it has its own unique challenges that we've got to get through. And, um, and then you factor onto that, this current environment and some concerns about Mexico. And I, I would like to point out that uh, I really believe in Mexico uh, uh, and, and uh, invested in it for the long term. Um, but uh, that's where we find ourselves and we've got to work through it. But once we have uh, uh, at, uh, the, the, the day when we when we get this project permitted, uh, you know, it, it'll be a very unique beast uh, to, to have that kind of scale of feasibility study fully permitted. There's not a lot of projects out there uh, that that uh, are at this development stage because it's so tough. So I hope that uh, uh, is you know, we'll, we'll give a frame of reference for people. Okay. This three million that you raised in the midst of COVID, obviously that was quite expensive money. And if people did start paying attention to you, it, the money would get cheaper to raise, right? So what, what are you doing with that? Is it literally, as you said, to just cover you while you sit and wait for the permitting process? I just cover overheads, uh, or are you actually being able to do anything meaningful on the ground? Yeah, by and large, uh, it, it's enabling us to push out the permitting, um, uh, or you know, to to give us the time frame um, uh, uh, that we have uh, keep lights and doors open and and all that sort of a thing. Obviously, but uh, uh, I I certainly would like to have more capital uh, to be able to continue to de risk the project. There's always desktop studies that you can do that improve a project. There's always things that you can. You can achieve so there are some obviously our community relations uh uh making sure that people um uh the stakeholders of the project understand you know where we're at and and what the process is is extremely important uh so we um uh you, you know we're um uh we're just kind of biding, you know, waiting for these permits right now. But obviously, we're doing everything we can on the legal front and uh, to resolve it, and uh, and that's our focus. Okay, who who gave you that money? I mean, where did you raise it from? Yeah, those are uh, in those were insiders. Um, we have a large, uh, we had a large, well, an existing shareholder stepped up and and did uh, the lion's share of it, um, and and we and, and insiders. So. Uh, you know, it was, uh, I think, a real, uh, uh, represents a real commitment to to the project and, and the company by uh, uh, people already vested. Well, I mean, I mean, given that the, the use of it is just to kind of keep the lights on, it feels like it's a case of uh, protecting their uh, existing investment. Um, you know, you, you're reliant on this permitting process. So maybe let's talk about moving what happens post feasibility study, because we've seen and spoken to lots of companies who are coming up with different ways to accelerate the time frame in which they get to a, you know, uh, an FID. Um, you, you've got to get a, a, a DFS done. Um, that's going to cost money. It's going to take time. Or, or is it? Have you got an accelerated uh, version? Well, our, 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 our feasibility study there is in our, is in our back pocket. Um, uh, so, um, you know, I think that's a major, major milestone uh, that we that we've achieved, and we waited 
until we had a feasibility study, a lot of people don't do, uh, they jump, uh, I, I've seen this, a lot of uh, projects go from scoping study or PEA right into feasibility. And uh, there's a lot of risk in that because uh, there's a lot more detail uh, required for a feasibility study. So we did a pre-feasibility study first and I, I don't regret that. I think it, uh, there was significant changes from pre-feasibility to feasibility. For example, we went from a tailings dam to uh, dry stack uh, filter tailings. Um, the project was modified in a number of those kinds of ways. Um, you know, obviously the resource and the open pit, uh, um, those things didn't change a lot, but there's a lot more that goes into the project uh, development stage. So, you know, we um, have spent those past 10 years and the money uh, we talked about previously in, in doing those kinds of things. Uh, so, that, you know, I like to think that this is quite an advanced um, study. Uh, there's a lot of aspects to the project that are advanced um, quite significantly. For example, we uh, uh, identified a used uh, plant in Alaska that had been used uh, for a matter of months uh, uh, in, a, in a project that, you know, uh, was put in production in 2008 and didn't, uh, uh, well, only operated for a few months. So um, it was kind of a, a, one of those mining stories that we don't like to hear. Uh, but, it, it, you know, I think has proven very good for our project because we were able to secure uh, a chunk of, of what we'll need for our mill uh, for very, you know, very low cost. And, uh and so, you know, we, we've spent uh, $2 million beyond the cost of buying that, um, um, uh, that equipment into getting it ready to ship to Mexico. So, you know, we've, we've been really working at de-risking this project uh, behind the scenes, and there's always more to do. Um, you know, they're, they're, that would speed up the proce process. Um, but uh, you know our our focus really is those permits, and there's been a lot of work, uh, extensive water studies. Uh, we have uh, very extensive uh, surface and subsurface water studies uh, for quality and flow to understand. As I mentioned, there's going to be a, 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 you know a, a new a water reservoir for clean water for local communities and and mine use during operation, and we wanted to make sure we really understood that. Uh, before we were making those kind of commitments. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that gives you a little flavor of what's gone into the, into this past 10 years. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's been, it's, there's been a lot of balls in the air. Yeah, I'm what I'm trying to get out of you is, you know, looking forward, how do you get, let's, let's say the permits turn up tomorrow. Let's just say they turn up tomorrow. How do you get to the point where you're pouring first gold, first silver? We initiate. Uh, we initiated project uh, finance discussions, into, anticipating our permits at the end of last year or thereabouts, and and obviously those those have been put on hold. Uh, so I think um, you know we it's it's a bit stale because obviously we we uh, um, but but we had preliminary discussions with a wide range of groups that uh, you know could be interested in financing a project like Extaca, and so. Uh, last year, before we announced our the the stall in our permitting process, uh, you know the questions I was getting are what what is going to be the breakdown of of capital? Uh, you know how what's your company's view on debt versus equity? And and obviously those things are quite market dependent, and we're in a completely different environment now. So that's the that's the next step that we would jump into here immediately is uh, is is the project financing uh, discussions. Should we have permits in hand? And obviously people ask me what's our exit strategy, and uh, my answer is very simple: we're agnostic. Uh, we have assembled a team of people we believe that would be expanded upon, of course, that are quite capable of putting this project into production. Uh, we announced last year the addition of John Thomas uh, as Vice President of Project Development, and he was he was uh, integral and essential to the Atlantic Gold uh, development story, which was been a very successful, ultimately, M&A story. Um, so, you know, that, that's a very good example of a project that went through a number of iterations and permitting over the years and so on and so forth and comes out the other side. And I think it was bought out last year or the year before there for over a billion dollars uh, with a scale of production and, and uh, re resource and reserve base uh, not too dissimilar from this project. So that's the kind of, uh, you know, we think that if you, 
you know, you build it, they will come. Um, and as I say, there's a number of things you got to go through. So we're we're open to you know a broad range of outcomes, but it's a capital gain that we're we're trying to provide our shareholders. Okay, and with this three million bucks, how long is it going to last you? I mean, are you cutting back costs given that people are just sitting around waiting, um, or is it the overhead just as usual? Yeah, we 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 have uh, and and. Uh, uh, you know, we'll continue to cut back. Uh, obviously, uh, we're a pretty lean and mean group. Um, we, uh, ha- you know, our, our management team is, is, is very lean and mean, and we have excellent advisors in Mexico. Uh, and uh, this, this, the money we have in the bank, we believe will, will uh, allow us to get through uh, the, you know, the, the permitting steps that we're, that we're taking. Um, so, it, you know, obviously it doesn't allow us to do a lot of extras. Uh, there would be a, you know, if I had my druthers, I would be doing a bunch of additional uh, refining of the feasibility study, uh, um, you know, additional desktop studies, trying to improve it, make it better, chase up those things like the, the, the um, you know, perhaps our limestone waste could be cement feed. Uh, uh, there's a number of things that, you know, as with every project at whatever stage that you can look at to try to improve it and refine it further. Uh, it's a very risky thing to build a mine, as I think uh, all your uh, listeners would know. Um, and the more you, the more work you do before you uh, deploy the capital, the absolutely better it will be. So obviously those things are kind of on hold right now um, while we're, we're waiting on this key thing. Morgan, thank you very much for running through that story. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's new to the listeners, new to me. Um, sounds like you know what you need to do going forward. Stay in touch, let us know how you get on, especially when, if that permit comes through. Good. Well, thank you very much for the time. I, I really hope that we'll be able to have updates sooner than later. This uh, this delay has thrown a real spanner in the works with uh, with everybody and, and everything, and I wish everyone health and wellness. We put out a, a news release on February 27th, which you know describes the details of the particular concern that's holding up our permits and, and our approach to resolving it. Uh, I really hope we'll have a further update sooner than later. Uh, uh, we're, we're working very hard on it, I can assure you, and I really appreciate your your time uh, uh, for having me on.